fantastic. Thank you, Anna. Uh, okay, so uh, as oh, I always start saying, this is a series of webinars that we've been doing since March, uh, since this uh, craziness of having to be at home and understanding that it's crucial for parents to have some support on how to how our brain learns, what is important in the process of learning, um, how to create a better envir environment for our children at home. Uh, and on the other hand, also the importance of for teachers to have some support uh, in these moments where we are reinventing ourselves as educators that we are now teaching from our own home to our students' home. So it's kind of a different scenario, very different scenario, very, de very demanding. Um, and uh, we've, been, we've been visiting a couple of, of topics uh, from literacy, from emotions, from grit, from character, from how to do a, a, thing, a virtual class and so forth. And today we are going to be focusing on the, if this works, on the topic of the arts and the art of learning through the arts. Um, and we decided that this was an important topic because um, even though governments and even, even though many schools and teachers are aware of the importance of the arts, and the curriculums are already considering the arts as a core subject. Uh, when facing this pandemic and when facing this situation of being sent home, something very interesting happened, and is that many of the schools and many of the teachers had the tendency to go to the traditional way of teaching that was, and I'm not judging anybody that is here, I know there's many of you right now, but many of the teachers uh, in, the, in the challenge of facing a new way of teaching went back to the, to the traditional ways of teaching, which was more like giving a, a, the academics. And we somehow perceived that the arts were left behind. Uh, also, by talking with a, with a lot of parents that were contacting us and sending emails and actually having webinars uh, and having the conversation direct conversation with us they were also saying that they were they were afraid of the messy of the messiness in the in the at home um, that the art teacher was expecting the children to use paint and that was crazy or that they were losing a lot of time um, doing art uh, and they wanted to know so we immediately um, so we immediately saw that there was a, a gap there that we needed to, to talk about. So that is why today uh, I am going to be talking about the arts and the art of learning. I'm sorry, the art of learning through the arts. Uh, art teacher. Okay, so the goal today is to to talk about what, what, what are the arts for us? What is, um, <coughs> I'm sorry, I got an allergy or something. Um, what are the arts from our perspective? So from your perspective and what is learning and how can we develop the arts and through the arts learn? So that's the, a bigger goal that uh, I have today. The, the other goal that, um, is, is implying this webinar is the uh, is learning the art the different arts and the skills <coughs> oh my goodness i apologize for this uh, and the skills that the arts develop uh, we're going to talk about art programs for schools uh, i'm not going to go through that too much <coughs> I, I got an energy i totally totally uh, apologize <laughs> Uh, I'm going to talk about understanding the arts and how we can incorporate the arts in the learning, in the academic learning, but also how, especially how to incorporate the arts at home, how to start seeing the arts differently. Um, um, and if you are part of the, 
if you are an artist or you are an art teacher or if or you are passionate about art please do uh, raise your hand uh, interrupt open your microphones this is a this is a small um, group of of webinars we have 15 so uh, hopefully hopefully you will uh, participate uh, we're going to be talking about how the arts and the and developing the artistic skills uh, help the learning and help the brain and hopefully you're going to be reflecting on where you are in every webinar um, I'm doing the analogy of a um, light uh, traffic light with the red yellow and green so hopefully throughout the conversation you are going to have this um, traffic light in mind determining i'm in red i'm in yellow uh, or i'm in green and either or if you are in red feeling like you are not doing this and you weren't considering this in your classroom or at home well what can i do to improve it uh, and hopefully raise awareness so um, i can focus on on the arts if you're in the green area the same there's always a space for growth so if you feel that you are already doing what else what is new here that I might refine a little bit what I'm already doing uh, that I, I can improve. Um, so hopefully I'm also in Also in all the webinars, I start with this uh, because it is important that when we are talking about others and how to teach others and how to to be a model for others and how to help our children learn and how to help our children learn the arts uh, it always always the circle of impact starts with you that's something that we always say um, in the best uh, trainings that we are pointing with one, one finger but there are three fingers that are pointing to me how am i taking care of myself how am i living in coherence how am i um, approaching the arts and having a, a relation with the arts what is my what are my feelings in regards to the arts and um, what do i think about the arts because whatever i am thinking whatever i am feeling whatever i am uh, doing and however i am taking care of myself is impacting our children your family and and beyond so there are the circle of impact goes beyond the people that you are that you think you are impacting there's always like a domino effect. So every single webinar, I start with this. Are you, are you taking the time to reflect? Uh, well, actually you are here, so that's, that's a plus, and thank you for being here. Uh, but they take the time to reflect and, and look yourself in the mirror in the, in the way of reflecting to, to learn. So when talking about the arts, uh, there are many, many, many researches and programs that are studying the arts. One, one of which is a, it's Project Zero from Harvard University, uh, which started like 60 years ago. And they were, I guess, the first ones because uh, at that time, uh, Dr. Goodman, he wanted to, to study how the arts impacted learning, how the arts impacted, impacted the, the the brain at that time when they started it was the 60s and if you remember in the 60s there was a lot of hippies and the arts weren't uh, in fashion the arts were more connected towards drugs or to, towards um hippie hippism so when he started the the research about the art he found with uh, dr howard garner and dr david perkins at the time they were his peoples, uh, they, they found out that there were no research about the arts and how the arts impacted the learning and the brain. So 60 years ago, uh, the studies of the arts changed drama drastically because they discover that actually arts actually do impact our brain, actually are beneficial for, our le for learning and so forth. So after them, many other universities and many other teams have been studying the arts. So there's even a journal of the of education and the arts, um, 
and many books about art and learning and the arts and so forth. So this is to say if there is any doubt, uh, because there's still doubt, not necessarily everybody is aware of the importance of the arts. There, there, are, there are many people still that think that it is more important to learn maths and to develop language and to do science than the arts. And I'm not saying that the arts are more important, but they're equally important. And hopefully throughout the hour of, of conversation, eh, I'm going to get to the point of why the arts are, are so important. Eh, and I'm not diminishing, obviously, the value of science, math, language, and even physical education is important. So, um, it's been studied, studied, there are lots of research that are actually supporting the importance of the arts for learning and for the brain development. <coughs> I don't know what is wrong with me. And believe me, it's not the virus. I'm not, it's not that. It's an allergy that I just got. Uh, okay. So why is it important? We, we just discussed that there are well, I just mentioned that there are many studies that are supporting the arts. Uh, 40, 48 states here in the in United States decided that uh, in elementary and secondary, uh, there was an actual, actually an act that um, stated the standards for the arts and also stated, stated that the arts needed to be among the core subjects that every child need, needed to learn. Uh, so it's no longer. Um, an elective, uh, probably you already know that, but it's not just for the sake of it, it's because there's the research behind it. Um, if you see on the bottom of the, of the slide, it is, it is uh, more than twice likely that children that have gone through art programs graduate from college. And it is, it is major, uh, it is major than double of children that have uh, engaged in an art program end up finishing school. Uh, one of the biggest problems in, in, in the states with school is the, the withdrawal, the withdrawal of, of students. So it, you, see, you see the difference. So twice as much. Now, uh, We have, we have uh, seen from the research that they stay in school, but we have also seen from research that uh, children that are engaged in art, and I'm going to talk the different kind of arts, they are more successful in maths and science. So if we were concerning for about math and science, well then it is crucial to understand that the arts are a language and the arts develop skills that support the math and science. Um, curiously enough, children that attend to the, the art programs that are really in an art program uh, have a tendency three times higher to attend school. So if they are thinking of missing a class, if they are in an art program, three times more likely to go to school than the ones that are not in the arts. Uh, so anyway, this is to say the arts are important if there was any doubt. In UK, uh, in, the, in the national curriculum for, U, for UK, the arts and crafts and design are all embodied in, into the arts program, are the highest form of human creativity. Uh, and, and if we stop right now and think, well, actually, the job uh, right now, the hiring factor, and it was right here, 72% of business people are saying that they are looking for creativity skills in the people that they are hiring. And the arts, are the ones that embody that and are the ones to develop the human creativity. Through the arts, you develop critical thinking too. If you have a program of art 
that is rigorous, if you understand the language of art, if you understand that arts is not only drawing or painting, the arts have are, are a full language, and hopefully I'm going to go through that uh, during the during the presentation. The arts and the design both reflect and shape our history. Uh, art is a language, or the arts are a language, uh, with which human beings have um, been able to communicate specific situations throughout history. Um, if, if you see the, the artist is um, putting in his piece of art, his feelings, his ideas, his perception of them of life as the artist is seeing it at the moment. So the art is a, is a mean of communication, it's a language, to the extent that, that since 2000 and probably before 2000, um, it was declared that literacy or an illiterate person is not that one that doesn't know how to read and write, but is that that doesn't understand the arts and media and technology. And, and, and this is major because right now, many times we are so concerned about our children being so uh, fluent in their reading and their writing skills. Master the skill, but many times we are forgetting that today the way that we are communicating is through the media. Actually, today we are communicating through the media. And through the media, there's, there's color, there's light, there's sounds, there's images. And actually now we know that our brain captures and understands and, key and, and um, remembers from associations and images. So if you are listening to my words, your words somehow are being connected through the synaptic connections, but every word has a, an architectural representation, and has an image representation. It is, it is not about words, it's about the images and the way, the, the way that our brain is actually remembering and understanding. So understanding the art, understanding the power of how we use light and how we use color to communicate and how we use movement and gestures and sounds to communicate today is being literate. So if we have small children, like some of you just put there that you are a parent of a 24 mo 22 months old child, eight months old, even if you have a teenager at home or you are a teacher of teenagers and so forth, it is very important that we understand this. And if we're saying that the arts are a language and that this is the language that we are using as humanity and that's the way that our brain actually understands through associations and through images, then even if I'm, if I'm a math teacher or if I'm a historian or if I'm a language teacher, I need to understand the power of the arts to integrate the arts to my class, to work with the art teacher in the school, to, to understand that the child that I have in front, the, my, my, my child, my own child or my students, they can communicate through the common literacy or they can communicate through so many other languages through the arts. And I can actually see understanding and make thinking visible through the arts. So it switches the value of, uh, of the arts. It's no longer art as a subject that children go there and they paint. It's art as a strategy. It's art as a language to um, to engage with learning, to engage with concepts, to engage with communication, and to engage with others so that we understand each other, developing the understanding of the language of the arts. Um, so 
I hope I'm, 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 I'm kind of making a point. If you have any question or any comment, just let me know, raise your hand, um, because I would love to have a conversation. So why is it important? What are other benefits? Um, not only that it's a language, it's not only that it's, it's the language of our brain, uh, the arts and all the ways of arts, and we will talk about that, stimulate our brain growth. Um, if we think always in the same way, through the same um, mean, um, about the same things, our brain is going to only make connections, synaptic connections and, and neural networks of, of the same thing. When you are working with the arts, you are stimulating your brain from different um, multisensory experiences that create different pathways and different um, networks for memory and so forth. Uh, but also the arts, because the arts are a language that is communicating feelings and is communicating ideas and is communicating um, facts and, it, uh, and the arts are communicating history and so forth, your brain is engaging in multiple perspectives. So you are, you're, you are stimulating your, the brain, your brain, actually, because it starts with you, and your children's brain, because the arts, you, you are stimulating your brain. And if you are only reading books through the language of literacy, the ABCs, you are stimulating and you're probably considering different perspectives. But when you incorporate the arts, you are considering perspectives, different perspectives from the artists and so forth, but you are also considering different perspectives of the languages. So the perspective is coming in a different language. So your brain is challenged and the, your student's brain is also, are, are also challenged and there are more um, synaptic connections and so forth. Um, because the arts are our, are a language and a way of communicating and it is it is said that the, uh, it's also the language of emotions and um, it is sometimes you don't find the word but that red intense red or green or the mixture of the line uh, and the curves of the line and so forth are expressing much more than a couple of words so it's a language that expresses uh, emotions and allows for interpretation, allows for the brain to engage in interpreting what the artist was trying to say. Uh, it's, it's a different way of communicating. And allowing your brain to communicate through the arts, it's a way of healing. It's a way of dealing with your emotions. It's a way of uh, being able to, to manage your emotions, to express your emotions, to liberate uh, anxiety and so forth. So it's, it's a way it, the art to stimulate healing. And if we say that the art to stimulate healing and it's a, converse, it's a language of emotions and so forth, when a child is, is able and is allowed to communicate in different ways, different than the verbal and the written way, there's some freedom, there's, there's more connection, there's engagement, uh, there's expression of emotions, and therefore, a, th there's a level of stress that goes down, and therefore, we have better behaviors. There's reduction of uh, reduction of bad behaviors, and this is from research, not from my perception. It's from research. It's research based. It, it promotes more social tolerance. The language of the arts promote more social tolerance. Um, a person that has been engaged in the arts understand that there are different perspectives and different ways of communicating and different ways of expressing. So it's more uh, lean towards understanding and being tolerant of others' ideas and other ways of doing. Um, so when you are more tolerant, when you have a, a, a more coherent way of expressing your emotions and so forth, it is also proven by research that you engage, um, your, your civic engagement is better. 
because you, your so, social skills improve in the sense that you understand others and, and understand and hope to be understood. And that's the problem that many of the artists and, and they uh, are, have this language, but not necessarily society has underst under, uh, understood this. So the language of the art sometimes feels that are misunderstood. And this is very, very important to, to raise awareness because it's a language that empowers, it's a language that um, heals, it's a language that is the most used language, it's the language of our brain. And yet, uh, socially, not necessarily has the value that it should have. And again, as I started saying at the beginning, um, today, more than ever, that we are doing school, um, virtual schooling and so forth, many parents and many teachers have been concerned uh, about not being messy at home or having enough time to do the language and the science and the maths and the history and not necessarily the arts. So we are raising awareness that it's crucial to integrate the arts, hopefully in all the subjects, uh, you know, the disciplines, uh, but if not, at least in the arts, and hopefully the art teacher is in communication with the other teachers and the parents. So we understand actually um, expressing. I want to, to invite you right now to do a thinking routine that is called the color symbol image routine. And um, if it's okay with you, um, you can write it down in the chat. So it, it's going to be about your experience with the COVID-19, with the situation right now. So just go back to COVID-19. We were talking about the arts. And we're going to use a thinking routine that is called color symbol image. So COVID-19, just pick a color that will represent for you COVID-19. If COVID-19 was a color, what color would it be? So you're going to pick a color. Then you're going to pick a symbol and hopefully you could draw, draw it. Uh, I don't know if, if, we, if we can do that. Uh, we can, you can, um, everybody to, I'm going to allow chat. So I'm allowing everybody to talk. You are helping me with that or no, I'm doing it. Uh, yeah, you're doing it. And you can also share like a white screen for everybody to write or to draw if you want. Okay, so let's share a white screen. If you make me host, I can do it because right now I don't have any control. <laughs> no. Uh, Anna, 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 Anna. Let me see. I mean, panelists. More, yeah. attendees, but uh, make host. There you go. Anna, so you were there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so let's pick a color. Let's pick a symbol that will represent COVID-19 and then an image. A symbol is just an image, one, one image, you know, a symbol, you are adults. Uh, but an image, just imagine that you're taking a picture and you're putting a lot of things like a you are a collage of many things that will represent COVID-19. So let's talk through the arts. Are you sharing the screen, Anna? I couldn't. I don't see the option, sorry. I think in, in the webinar option, you cannot share the white screen. So just write it down. Uh, can, I, can I allow cameras here? I don't see. Yes, I'm so going to upgrade everybody to panelists so everybody can share their cameras. If you have a piece of paper and you want to show your 
your symbol of your image or just write it down okay so agnieszka said color red uh, Isabel is saying the blue, the symbol will be, symbol teórico, riñas, joint. I, I don't understand. Riñas, uh, fighting. Humanity join as one, all together. Okay. So right. does anybody want to share the microphone or open their cameras? You can open your microphone, you can open your cameras and we can all see each other. Okay. Oh, I try to. Okay. Okay, so who wants Agnesa, you want to, yes, tell us. You, you pick red, so what made you pick red? Uh, because red uh, for me is the symbol angry. Uh, so uh, in this time COVID, I am angry because I uh, cannot meeting with my friends. Okay, good. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so it's, it's your emotion and COVID is 19, good. Any symbol that you picked? Uh, the symbol for me uh, is the hole. Uh, I'm feeling uh, like the somebody who is on the big hole when uh, um, haven't uh, um, door <laughs> for exit. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wants to, to share? Thank you. You're welcome. Natalia, you opened your your video. You want to share your color? Um for some reason blue came up. I think it's uh I don't know. I I, I think of COVID nineteen, I think of like boredom, like you're just at home all day long maybe the blue is kind of calm and very not interesting i guess <laughs> That's what I thought. okay and did you pick a symbol um no i i couldn't really think of one the only thing that came to my mind was like a uh, like a cross like the red cross okay something like it's a disease and everything related and to health. my mm -hmm. okay i saw Isabel, she left. I do uh, think something happened. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else wants to, to share. I thought about the color purple. I have done a lot of arts during this uh, time. So for <laughs> me, it's like the color I like the most when I draw and, or when I sew, sew, you say, I think. Um, so my symbol is- And you're sewing. Yeah, I do. So. Uh, you're sewing. Okay. <laughs> so, so. And then my symbol is like a flower because I like a lot to do flower, like to do nature things when I draw. And then the image is related to, to like me with myself, like, like me with doing the arts or me meditating or me, like it has been a time of being with me. <laughs> oh, interesting. Great. Isabel, I don't know if you wanted to share. Thank you, Anna. Yes. Yes. Uh, do you see me? I, we are not well, seeing. I chose. You can turn on your okay. your, your camera okay. so we can all see each other. But you can you can listen to me. Okay. Uh, you can you listen? Yes, we can yeah. listen. To you. I yeah. chose blue. I chose the color blue okay. because for me it's this is like a learning as a the world, all, all the humanity, we are learning together. I chose the symbol two rings because we are joined okay. uh, against this virus, but at the same time, uh, imagine we, we, we wouldn't have this seminar. Maybe if we, if we. Yeah, that is true. There's a connection, right? Okay, we, we lost Isabel. 
Fantastic. So you see, we, we are talking about a very, very serious topic, which is COVID-19. Uh, and, and a way of expressing it was through the arts, through a color, through a symbol, and through an image. Obviously, we had the paper and the colors and so forth. It would be so much richer than what we just did. But anyway, your brain went and made some, made some, some um, moves. So now I want to ask you, what did your brain do? When I asked about defining a color and what, what, was, what were you doing? And we can talk, you don't need to write it down if you can just ask for the microphone. What was your brain doing? Mm, imagining. Imagining, what else? Trying to remember memories. Yeah, you were connecting to all your memories of like, yeah, okay, memories, what else? I also try to communicate something that is more difficult to communicate that with words. So it's like searching for something that I couldn't communicate with words and try to communicate it. Okay, so you, mm -hmm. so you look for something to communicate in a different way than words, okay. That, you, that is easier to communicate with the arts, with the color and the... Was it yeah, so easy for you? It was not that easy, but I think if I have to explain that in words, it's more difficult. Okay, great. <laughs> Good, yeah, fantastic. So we could ask our students about COVID-19 and have them write. And it is okay. I mean, they need to do research and of course they need to read and write. Mm -hmm. But there's another way of communicating, which is the arts. And through the arts, we can make things invisible. Uh, for example, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name, Agnieszka? Agnieszka, it's okay, Agnieszka. Agnieszka, Agnieszka. Yes. Um, you, you made your thinking visible and actually your emotions visible when you said, I'm, I'm angry. I'm angry that yeah. I'm here. I'm angry that I cannot be with my friends. I'm angry. And, and, yeah. and it brought out uh, many things about you that in an instant, the ones that are here, we learned about you. Mm -hmm. So you made your thinking visible, you made, you made your emotions visible, and it was just picking a color, and then what your brain was doing, and everybody's brain, when I'm asking what, it, what was your brain doing, you picked a color, and when I asked you what, what made you pick the red, your, your brain was doing a metacognitive process of going back and saying, yeah, right, why red? Or why blue? Mm -hmm. And actually, you see the difference between Isabel and Natalia, they both picked blue but from a different perspective. Natalia picked blue because it was kind of boring and, and so forth. And then Isabel explains her blue in a different way. So um, it's a language that allows us to see that there are different perspectives, that there are different ways of communicating. And it can actually make visible the understanding and the comprehension, including the emotions, of our students and our children. So it's very powerful. Uh, there's so many things that I want to say that I'm, I'm seeing that I'm, um, okay. So why are the arts important? Because the arts are connecting with people, the arts are connecting different perspectives and different uh, concepts. Just by talking about two, two colors, because it was blue and, and, and red, and the symbols and the rings, and um, we are talking about different concepts and how a ring together is representing connection and possibilities and creativity. And it was very simple. It was just two rings together. But that brought us so many other concepts that the COVID-19 brought to us because it is true we are in isolation at our, we are no we are in quarantine at our home but we are not necessarily in isolation so if i'm far from my friends and so forth how can i connect right now we are connected and not very often i see anna or isabel or raul or anisa or natalia or terry uh, <laughs> uh, to, to actually be be discussing so this is a different mean and so forth. So 
Um, the arts have also a power that has no time. It's a, it's a language that human beings have used always. Uh, and it has no time and no age. A baby uses the arts to express, uses gestures, uses movement, uses music, uses a uh, color to express. Uh, so it has no time in history and it has no, no time in age. Uh, so it's very powerful. Obviously, through history, the arts have changed. And it's part of learning about the arts. How have they changed? Because in how they have changed, we are learning about how human beings have been changing and how the perception of human beings at those times. So probably from COVID-19, we are going to have a breakthrough in the arts. Let's wait and see. But I, I, um, I would expect to start seeing so many different pieces of art. Actually, we already have through the through the media and through the texting and through the images that are coming out, there's a different language because of COVID-19, which is a human situation right now. So the, there, there's, there are ways of expressing through the art. So we are going to see a, a change. I, I can almost bet about it. And the arts develop a, a growth mindset. I'm hoping that everybody here has heard about a, growth mindset from Carol Dweck, which uh, is basically the ability to see an opportunity, the ability to see that uh, if I persevere, that if I um, do um, have effort, put some effort in situations, I can achieve my goals. It's a, a growth mindset understands that our brain can develop, that our thinking can, changes, can change uh, so the arts, when done in a rigorous way and from the artist's perspective, uh, develops growth mindset, and I will hopefully go through that, improves cognition, improves understanding, looks for understandings, makes connections, as you just felt in a little bit. The art is a mean of communication. It deepens the cultural understanding of self and others. Uh, because it's a, a language, it's a cultural language. So you see the art uh, different in different countries or different situations and different moments, as, as I was just saying. So the arts uh, deepen the understanding of my surrounding, of the cultures, of others' cultures. Um, through the arts, it helps uh, because it involves so, so much your emotions. It focuses, it improves attention and engagement. Um, it is very interesting that the artists, when they are at their art studios, they, they are okay with uh, receiving feedback. If the, and they are actually very critical with their pieces and with their movement and with the music. They, they know that, there's, that you can improve. They know that they can make a judgment to become better. Um, so when you study art and you go through the habits of mind of the art studio, one of the things is, is that you are creating habits of mind, mind of an artist that it's open to feedback. It's open to re self-reflection, but it's all open to feedback. An artist normally goes to other artists and asks, for um, opinions and actually they, they, they have groups and so forth. So um, one of the, some of the skills through the, through the study of art, it's, it's being able to, to have this open, be open to learning and, and, and to feedback. The arts, obviously, um, there's a microphone that is open and I can hear someone talking. I don't know. Um, the arts obviously help for creativity, for design, and for innovation. Because we, when, when we work in the arts, we understand that we can find a new way of doing things to solve a problem. So it's not only just creativity, 
uh, if you do the arts with the rigorosity of the art, uh, you are also developing design because you are solving problems and you are also developing um, inno innovation skills. Not necessarily all of them. Of course, there are others that you have to, to foresee. But through the arts, you develop creativity and design and, and innovation. You solve problems. It's a discipline. Uh, there's persistence. There's effort. There's continuity. There's a reflection to understand. Uh, there's ep empathy and understanding that, that there are other ways of, of, of understanding. So imagine these skills if you are studying history. Or imagine these skills if you are studying maths. All these are needed to be transferred to the other disciplines and to life. These are skills for life. There are many programs to learn art. Uh, I was. I, I, th I guess this. I have said this many times. There, are, it's a language that is not necessarily verbal, and it has non-verbal conventions, um, and it should be, and it should be integrated with technology. Uh, it's not only just the arts. In order for for the literacy that I was mentioning for today, needs is the arts plus the technology to understand the arts of technology, uh, or or technology as a, um, as a tool to develop art. Um, people, creativity, and this I have said many times. Now, a good program of art or a good encouragement of art at home should be following the art studio habits of mind, which were the ones of persistency, of engagement, of uh, feedback, and so forth that I just men mentioned. A, a good program of art should be developing, developing artistic skills. And I mean, if you are dancing, what are the skills so you perform well in the dancing? Your movements should be according to the skills that are required. If you are painting, you should be able to understand how to use the, the uh, el pincel, um, the, the pencil, no, Ay, the brush, and the, the techniques, brush. And, and the techniques, yes, and the techniques to use the brush. So art is not only giving painting to a child to do a messy art, it is part of it, it is part of it because it's an expression, but it's also learning the skills and learning the techniques that are specific to the art. And that is going to build up the habits of mind that we want in an art program. A good art program uh, is that one that understands that no matter which is the art that you are learning, it's a language. It is a language. And it's a language that can be used for math. It's a language that can be used for uh, history, geography, language, or any other discipline. It's a language of communication. So a program of art should, should understand that and use the arts as a language. And it should have rigor to learn about the techniques, rigor to learn about the artists, rigor to learn about the history, rigor to, to learn about the, the language and how it, it is expressing, but also the flexibility in the sense that it's a language. So I can teach you the skills, I can teach you the techniques, I can teach you about this language, but I will not teach you what to think because it's the flexibility of the artist to be able to use the language for, a free, for, for the freedom of expression. So it has rigor and flexibility. I have the rigor of understanding the technique, but the flexibility of becoming an artist and make some switches to the technique because I have mastered the technique and I can use it in different ways. So in that sense, it's a language like, like, Spanish or Polish or English and so forth. The language, as soon as you know the lexicon, you learn the movement and you learn the sounds and you play with them and you can play with them. So in the arts, it is crucial that as parents, we understand that and as teachers, that it is not only one line of art and only one way of art, but it's, it's a whole language. So the child acquires the skill to be able to play with it and communicate 
his or her emotions and ideas and perceptions of the moment. There are many arts. One are the visual arts, excuse me, it went back, the visual arts. Hey. Dance, drama, music, sounds, arts. Here are some pictures of our, our children in our schools with the performing arts. So theater is an art, music, dance, um, photography is an art. It is important to learn about photography. Give your children a camera, allow them to have the picture. Think about what is your child uh, focusing through the camera because many, many times, and I didn't have like more time today to show you so many studies that we have done and, and projects that we have done through giving a camera to a child and understanding that the perception and the focus of their attention is not necessarily what we thought was the focus. Um, so give them a, 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 a camera and hopefully teach them how to use the light and so many technological things that cameras have today so they can actually play with it. It's culture. It's not only painting, it's also sculptures. It's, it's, it's a combination of, of, of all. Uh, drawing, of course. Uh, painting, architecture is an art. Building, building a structure. Designing the structure, calculating the structure, and imagining how, how the flow is going to be through the structure and so forth is, is an art. Um, and whenever working with art, it is, it is very important that this art is not just for the sake of art. So sorry, my friends, but we have art today and we have to do art. As any language and anything in life, it needs a purpose. If it's a language, what's the purpose? What, what is my motivation to use this, this right now to communicate what? So if, if I just have to do an art of copying, and I might be copying, for the purpose of improving a technique of trace or whatever. Uh, but the child understands that there's a purpose behind what I'm doing in art. So it is very important to understand that in order to be motivated and engaged with arts, you have to have a purpose. There, 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 there's need to be a, a purpose of communication or a purpose of learning the skill or, or the technique and so forth. Now, the art is not, not necessarily knowing about artists. Uh, obviously, we are hoping that you are learning about artists. It is part of art. But many, many times when going to a museum, people don't go to museums because I, I don't know about art. I don't care about the artists. But it goes beyond that. It's, it's, a, it's like reading a book. Going to a museum is, is like reading a book. It's learning about human beings is learning about a way of expression. So we don't have, I guess, time to go through, through the 10, um, I, I had 10 tips uh, when working through the arts. I, I more or less uh, included them in the, in the presentation. I'm going to go very, very fast, uh, but I would like to know if you have um, questions or anything my, my first recommendation, I, I'd rather answer any question that you have than go through the tips. Um, this is a long presentation that uh, I brought in for, to share, but this is a, a, a class that we give a, a, a bit longer. Um, but anyway, engage your children in music, engage your children in different types of music, um, allow your child to enjoy singing, Ver, from ver, actually from before birth, already engage them in music. Music, the, the learning of the music language it has been proven through research that gives your, your brain some um, networks that they did a study that people that had studied music before uh, uh, selected were more selected. They were more lean to be selected. Uh, why? Because of the rationality that they were using, uh, because of the um, the thinking skills 
that they were showing. So music develops uh, thinking skills. Have your child understand art from the intrinsic um, of your own culture, ancestry, and heritage. Make connections. Uh, you see Shakira there. Why is she wearing what she's wearing? Uh, Botero, I, I picked from Colombia. Sorry, I, I, I guess I am Colombian. <laughs> um, but look at the art and try to understand what is that saying about your heritage and what is that saying about the heritage of other countries and so forth. Play with the art. Allow them to use paper, markers, crayons. That's me with my with my uh, granddaughter and my my grandchildren. Uh, they were expressing. We were dancing. We were we were engaging. Don't be afraid of of being messy. Be afraid of not of not allowing them to be messy. Um, don't be afraid of them getting uh, painted buy paint that is not toxic and that is washable because they need that in their body in their full body they need they need that 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 uh, sensation and their way of expressing uh, she was picking the colors and so forth so allow them to engage in that and, and find the fun so from there you keep going uh, check out books in the library about the story of the artist there are many things uh, that are amazing to tell the story of the artist as a story. Uh, so introduce your children to the history behind it. Make videos together. Uh, this is a time to play at home. So uh, do, do a film, uh, write a script and do a role play. It's part, it's part of, the, of the arts and, and it allows them to express their points of view and do role play and express situation share poems invent poems do rhythm rhymes um, add new words to existing poems and so forth dear Ana Maria I apologize I thought I could understand the language but it is very complicated Raul uh, we're doing this in Spanish tomorrow uh, so if you want to to come back uh, tomorrow at 12 p.m. I'm doing this but in Spanish uh, yeah thank you um so make the videos share the poems uh, go to museums go to art festivals but okay we're in the pan pandemic guess what the most important museums and major museums in the world are giving virtual visits today and for free so engage your children in visiting a museum and talking about a piece of art not because you have to know about the piece of art just what is it telling you? What is it telling you? What do you see there? What is happening there? What is going on? What do you think this little bird means? What do you think the artist was trying to say? And it's just your point of view and it's just your child's point of view, but you're already engaging in so many deep levels of understanding and trying to, to, to read the language of because it's reading the language of the arts. So go to the go to the to the museums and don't be afraid. You don't have to visit the whole museum. You can pick two or three pieces of art and just discuss them. Or you can read a book and pick a piece of art and say, how is this book related to this piece of art? And make connections and make crazy connections and make fun of it. But engage, engage in the uh, model to them. Um, a friendship with the museum, a friendship with the art, a friendship with the, with the language. If you are a person, if you are an individual that is not necessarily leaned towards visiting a museum or uh, engaging in the arts. Uh, these, for example, are um, pieces of art from our students that we put every year in the libraries public libraries they allowed us to to do an exhibition of the art of our children and is uh, thinking through the arts and they are expressing what thinking is and how their brain processes thinking and so forth but through the arts and we're talking about infants and toddlers and two years old three years old five years old that are exhibiting their pieces of art and telling their story through the arts so 
uh, hopefully you do that. So go to museums, but also do exhibitions uh, with your children. Help them to find their passion. Um, stand up in front of a, a, a picture, watch dances, uh, different uh, folk, folklore uh, or ballet or, or movement or theater or even with puppets. Uh, engage them and allow them to engage in a variety of possibilities through the arts and allow for them to express so, do, so you can notice what, what are they liking and disliking and how they are connecting. Because a passion is developed only when you are, I mean, in order to develop a passion, you need first to be interested in something. It's the first step. So what are they interested in or, or on and, and how you can actually encourage encourage this engagement and interest to develop passions. But it's not your passion, it's their passion. Now, if you have a passion, share your passion, but not necessarily expect that they will engage in your passion. That is important. Um, in our schools, we say that our schools and our classrooms are museums because our teachers are curators of the pieces of art and they work, every child makes a work and that work, if it's a, it, 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 any work, even if it's movement with a picture or something, is their representation of their thinking, is their representation of their emotions and so forth. So every piece that a child does is, a, is very valuable. So teachers are curators in the sense that they are valuing every piece of art and they are de not decorating they're documenting that as a museum in their walls or in the spaces in the classroom so right now we're not in the classroom right now we're at home so if you are a parent and you have your children at home how are you valuing the pieces of art and the pieces of expression that your children are doing if, even if it's this little rock that the child decided to paint and we think that it's trash, it is not trash. It is a moment of your child of something special that captured their attention and their ideas and they decided to use, to express, to engage. So how are we valuing that and how are we modeling the value of that? Um, initiate projects, even if it's mid long-term projects, uh, so they develop their passion and give them ac accountability. And I've said the same thing when we were talking about grit and character. And I said the same thing when we were talking about play in previous webinars. Uh, and I, was, I said the same thing when we were talking about autonomy and accountability. Find projects, but give them autonomy, empower them to follow it up. You are by them sa their, their side, you are a coach. You can help, you can support, you can actually have your own project and go in parallel, but give them autonomy and, uh, and uh, empower them to have their project. And finally, look slowly to think deeper. We are in such a hurry all the time. So when Natalia was saying that uh, COVID-19 for her is it's, uh, blue because it's like calm and sometimes even boring, well, hopefully that time of calmness will allow us to see deeply, to, to look slowly for details, for um, little things that are going on and reflect on them and reflect and make adjustment, uh, adjustments to see, to improve as, as human beings, to improve as parents, to improve as teachers and and to understand, um, because when we stop and look slowly, we are engaging in a deeper line of thought that helps for the understanding, that encourages the understanding and deepens the understanding. So there are many thinking routines. I'm not going to go through them. You already know them. If you are part of uh, our schools, you have the booklet and you have the platform. If you are not part of our 
or schools, I highly encourage you to contact us. There are many things routines. You can also look at Project Zero at Harvard that they have uh, many thinking routines and, and we use other strategies too. So uh, just to, to finalize, I, I want to share that other schools were using a, an art program that is from Project Zero. Uh, somehow they're not selling it anymore. Some, I don't know why, but I, I got to, to get engaged and, and learned about it in a, in a presentation in, in Washington in the, in the Art Museum. And I bought it. It's, the, it's, it's called Quest. I don't know if you're seeing it. It's called Quest. And it's a way of engaging in the arts, understanding that I can, no matter what type of art, I can look at the arts uh, from different perspectives. I can look at the arts from the aesthetic, aesthetic, I don't know, here, aesthetic. So through the color, the balance, the flow, the proportion and so forth. But I can also look at the arts from the narrative. What is the story that this is telling me? Um, and there are many questions. So if you are part of our schools, you are going to be, uh, in everything that we're sending, we're sending some of the questions from the, from the line of thought uh, that this quest program, we can actually look at, at the art from the logical and quantitative and the mathematical thinking. But you can also look it from the foundational, philosophical um, values, uh, the philosophical engagement. Um, even from, do you like it or do you, don't you like it? What makes you like it or not like it? That's part of the philosophy. What is behind this? Experiential. What is the, ex, ex, the which is not a narrative, but what is the experience that is causing in me? And then a generic um, comes in Spanish and English. So if you are part of our schools, we have an amazing art program. Everything that we do is through the arts. We understand that the arts are crucial in everything for any discipline and for any, it's a language. And so as we are learning English and we're learning Spanish and hopefully Polish, we don't speak Polish, but we should hopefully learn something. Um, we're also learning the language of the arts. So it's allowing our children to express themselves through the arts. So I'm going to stop here. I don't know if anybody wants to open uh, microphones to share your own experiences. Uh, if you want to, to share what you've learned today, any takeaways, any three things that you've learned today, two questions that you have, and one thing that you are planning to implement. Isabel, you want to share? Uh, the things I learned, for example, I would like that my students go to a virtual museum and appreciate the different arts. I work in La Pintana, which is a very extreme and poor part from Santiago, the Chile, and mm -hmm. they have no access to, to, to museums. Uh, questions I have? No, no, no. I, I think it, uh, this is related with neuroscience, as, I, as you talk. Yes, absolutely. And I think I, I, one thing I'm going to implement now, uh, you know, I love crotte, crotte, to meet with crotte. And that's my expression, my artistic expression, my self-artistic expression. I love to pick up different wools, yarns, and, 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 share, and, and mix the colors. And for me, it's like a way of expressing. And Amazing. one thing I would like, yes, I love it. And one thing I would like that uh, in my school, my, my students learn that. That's it. And thank you very much. Amazing. Yes. I, I love the, the session. Ah, I'm glad, Isabel. Thank you. Uh, actually, you remind me of something that impacted me um, a couple of years ago when I was visiting our own school in Colombia, Colegio Gran Bretaña. I was, I was visiting uh, the secondary school 
And I guess, I, I, I don't know if Ana, Ana Maria Conde was there or not. Uh, I, I think you were, but I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. But this was a secondary class of a math teacher. And there was a, um, a couch in the class. So the setting was very interesting. And some of the students, the, the male and the female students, both, this is a, a, so some of the secondary male and, and female students, they were doing crochet. Yeah. And I was like, what? And they're in maths. And, and, he, and he took out a, a study that when you engage in this routinary movement of crochet and you are, not, you are doing it, you are doing it, you are doing, you are opening like windows in your brain for connecting knowledge and for, for connecting the knowledge that you are learning of the maths uh, through different paths and through different um, uh, synapses synapses and, and networks yes yes I understand. and so i was unbelievable i i have pictures i i i don't i didn't remember but probably for tomorrow i'm going to find the picture of them doing crochet and and this is like totally ag against what social social environment will say like teenagers doing crochet and they were having fun and they were enjoying it so yeah <laughs> yes. thank you for reminding reminding me that no, thank you very much. Is there any other comment? Any other? Uh, and Isabel, because obviously you are part of the of, of one of the schools, um, the Quest program and so forth is um, many many things of the arts are already in the in the platform, so you can extend extend the the knowledge. Thank you okay. very much. So I don't know if anybody, if Terry, Shoshana, Agnisa, Natalia, Anna, or anybody has a comment. I, I do, I do, Anna Maria. No, oh, Terry, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, art has always been not my favorite. And I always looked at it as art, as painting and drawing, and, and music comes very easy to me, and I express a lot through music. But when you did the COVID-19 with the color symbol image, it was difficult for me to wrap my head around COVID-19 and that. But I really came up with, with, I didn't express it, but, you know, my symbols and the color and everything, and it all did make connections. So it did open up a, a lot for me. Um, and, and that art really is a language and I never looked at it like that but then when you went over your 10 things you had said to start out with a red light a yellow light a green light and I yeah. thought oh I'm gonna come out red as a teacher <laughs> and and so as I as I thought because we're doing about theatrical arts you know and, and literature and so forth I was so impressed that when you put up the 10 things that I had done seven of them you know the children Children bought pots and pans, and we did a, a, a form of rhythm and, and, a, and a form of art, and, and they created their own stories out of our rhyming words because we learned about nursery rhymes. And I was like, oh, wow, I did that. Oh, wow. But I really wasn't looking at it the way you expressed it today, that I am including the arts. I'm a, I'm a yellow, so I'm def I would like to go and, and do it, like, think of it all the time. But you did give me a whole different perspective, and I appreciate that. Beautiful. Thank you. Th thank you, Terry, for your for your reflection. I, I think these reflections help us all uh, reflect more, even more. Yes. And w one of the things that I, I, I will recommend, because I, I'm, I'm pleased and I knew that you were doing s s so much more than what you are saying. But anyway, um, I value very much that that you are going away with a new perspective and try to, to present it to the children. Because yes. we might engage in the dance and we might engage in the techniques and so forth, but not necessarily understand that we are learning to speak Japanese because it's mm -hmm. a, a different language. I mean, obviously it's not Japanese, but, but it's a different language. It's a, it's a tool that I can use for life. And right. many adults, because it happens to me too, as you were expressing, for me, the arts are very hard very hard even though i grew up in a family of artists but mm -hmm. i i think very young at in a very young age my mom decided 
and my father and everybody decided that I wasn't like the best in the arts. Me too. I was good for something else. <laughs> so I wasn't the artist and, and I didn't engage in the arts. Right. And it's a language that I don't speak. And, mm -hmm. and when I married Gilberto that loves the arts, it was like, oh my God, and now I have to go to the museums. <laughs> uh, right? Like, yes. why do I have to go to a museum? But, but with time, I guess I'm, I'm kind of learning about the language. But sure. we, have, we have the privilege to be working with, with young children that they can learn the language from now, mm -hmm. from very young. So, so thank you for your reflection. That's very, very important. No, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there's no other comments, uh, thank you all for being here. Tomorrow is going to be in Spanish if anybody <laughs> wants to, to revisit. Um, and obviously do use the thinking routines, all the thinking routines and the, and the thinking keys and so forth. They all engage the arts in, in different ways. So everybody, thank you. Cannot chat with Anissa, why not? Thank you, this is okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Everybody. Take care. Bye. 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 And thank you very much. Thank you for being Bye. here. Bye. 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 Thank Take you. Take care.